Hi and hello to everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to implement a full wave rectifier using silicon diode in using multisim live. Okay, so just you type multisim live.com, multisim.com, sorry, multisim.com, the address bar, right? So it's logged in already. This is my name, Professor DMB. Uh, create circuit. Once you create the circuit, a page will be opening where we will be implementing our circuit. Right? I am going to implement a full wave bridge rectifier. For that, what is required is I need a AC voltage source. So, this is the AC voltage source. Bring the AC voltage, click the AC voltage source, bring it into the screen, put it here. Right? Here, the, uh, the parameters of the AC voltage source are given. It is given as peak voltage is 2 volt. If I click, if I click this 2 volt, 1 volt here, I will in the right side, I can see the parameters which I can vary for the voltage source the name of the voltage source V1 let it be V1 I am going to change the peak value to I can say from um, uh, 5 volt peak value is 5 volt frequency I am going to set it as it's 1 kilohertz I am going to set it as 50 hertz okay these two, two parameters I have changed then I need four diodes so diode symbol is there once I click the diode you can see various types of diode I am taking a, a PN junction diode, okay, simple diode, okay, I am keeping it here. For a bridge rectifier, I need four diodes, so I can use this symbol. As you can see, I can duplicate, make a copy, first diode is D1. If you make a copy, I have another diode, that is my diode D2, okay, then make a copy, I have a diode D3, okay, then again make a copy, This if I click it, I will make a copy, or else every time you have to go here and take the diode, right, this is the easy way to go. Then once the diode has been done, I need a load resistance, load resistance. So this is the load resistance. Bring the load resistance, rotate it, make it to vertical, right? Now you can make the connections for a full wave bridge rectifier. The load resistance is 1 kilo ohm. Let it be 1 kilo ohm. Uh, see, change the parameters of the diode. If you click the diode, you can see in the right side, uh, the diode D1 name is there. And we have the parameters like uh, saturation current, this reverse saturation current which is very small, 1 into e power 10, e power minus 14 is very small, breakdown voltage is e power 30, advanced, I go for the advanced parameters, this is very important, this is the junction potential, make the junction potential to 0.6 volt, for a silicon diode it is 0.6 or 0 0.7, okay, this is done, similarly change it for the diode D2, click the diode D2 and go into the advanced parameter, change the junction potential to 0.6 volt okay likewise do it for diode d3 and d4 the junction voltage for each diode and you have set the uh, peak voltage as 5 volt and as frequency of 50 hertz now you can connect the diodes right in the bridge, bridge rectified form so connect these two diodes first similarly connect these two diodes now It's very simple, right? You have to click the terminal, keep it there, then click once, then you can bring it down. Very easy to give connection. And once there is a connection between two wires, you can see there is a circle which is converging. Once it's converging, you are ready to make the connection, click again. Okay. Similarly, from the bottom, take the connection, wait for click it, then go right side. Okay, then click it, then go upwards, then you can see the convergence. Click it. Now the connection is established. Okay. Now other connections give further connections between these two. I will set go this way from here. Okay. Now this connection is also established. Right. Give the ground connection. Give the ground connection. Ground connection is done we can connect these two also here right between these two terminals we are going to connect the load resistance go from here that is you have to take from the terminals right r1 is having two resistance we have two terminals from one of the terminal bring it to this point from the other terminal bring it here 
okay so this is my load resistance is 1 kilo ohm instead of r1 it is better to name it as clicked up resistance you can see in the right side you can edit the element that is r l to say it is load resistance its value is 1 kilo ohm okay now we have to measure the voltage across the b1 voltage which is b1 output voltage across the load for that what i am going to do is i am going to take the uh, uh, voltage so, uh, voltmeter you can see here you can see the voltmeter the green color uh, probe is right, there you click that you can see various meter voltmeter separately ammeter current for ammeter and both voltage and current together so much we need only the voltage voltmeter so it click the voltage voltmeter keep it here it keep it anywhere right so this this will connect the this will measure the voltage at the voltage of v1 source voltage now make a copy copy bring it keep it here right now the voltmeter connection is done so fine now you can measure the uh, you can run the waveform on the circuit you can see the grapher is there okay substance is running and the single mode you can put the trigger in single mode you stop it try to vary the try to vary the scale okay it's given as minimum is 26 seconds you keep it as since 50 hertz the time period would be 0 to 100 millisecond 100 millisecond and you have set the peak value We said uh, change the peak value to minus 10 to plus 10, right? Plus 10 volt. Okay, but still uh, we are not able to see the if, if the waveform is looking like an half air rectified waveform. The reason is it's like with this voltage we are measuring, we need the potential difference between these two points. Okay, for that what you have to do is So if you look at the waveform, it is like a half air rectified only, okay, not a fully rectified. The reason is this blue indicates the output waveform. It is from here to ground, right? I need the voltage across RL. So we have to make this as reference, okay? So we have to make this as reference means go to the voltage source. We can see voltage reference uh, probe is there, black color probe. Bring it here, keep it at this point. So this is the voltage reference. Here this reference by is empty, okay? So if you click this, you can see reference 1 right go to pr2 that is a probe 2 here in the probe 2 we can see the option of voltage reference is ground don't say it's ground instead of ground we are putting it as reference 1 okay is it simple no right so this is pr2 is the output probe i measured at this point this is another probe which is a reference probe indicated by this black symbol right once you connect this black symbol now you go into the PR2 probe, change it the voltage reference. Initially, it will be default, it will be in ground. From ground, change it to reference 1. That's all. Okay. Now, you run the simulation. Okay. If you run the, if you run the simulation, I uh, see, I will stop it again. I will stop and run the simulation. Uh, running the simulation by clicking the triangle. You can see, this is the waveform input waveform is 5 volt and 50 hertz diodes are connected here the important thing you have to remember is the load resistance the stop word we have the measurement probe v that is pr2 and in the bottom of rl we are connecting a reference probe called v the reference probe all the probes will be here okay right all the probes on the left side we take it there then you click the pr2 uh, click the PR2, change it, the, if you have to stop it, then only I can show these things, right? So from here, see, the reference is here. You have to stop the simulation by, this, by clicking the square, the uh, simulation will be stopped. Then only this, uh, this tab will be coming, okay? From this, we can see the voltage reference. Take it, put it to this point at the bottom of RL, uh, okay? Now you change the reference of PR1. In default, it will be ground, change it to reference 1 because this is given reference is given as the name reference 1 so this voltage will be measured between the voltage between these two points that is the voltage across rl okay now you run the simulation by clicking the triangle run button okay by going into the graph this is schematic is for the circuit the graph if you click the grapher we can see the waveform 
if you click this it's a split screen both you can see the circuit and circuit and the waveform okay now you can see the waveform input waveform is the green waveform which is going from plus 5 to minus 5 output is the going up to the peak value is 3.6 you can see i am keeping the cursor means you can see the value is showing as time and voltage time and voltage you can see right for each point is interactive you can check it okay now the important point you have to remember is uh, why this is a voltage drop we are not getting 5 volt okay though it is rectified the output is only smaller this is up to 23.9 volt up to 4 volt only what happens to the remaining 1 volt that is the question okay so for that what what is the reason think about it the reason is though the diodes are if you look at the schematic during positive half of the cycle diodes d2 is conducting current will flow through this load and d3 will be conducting during forward bias d2 current flow through the load and d3 will conduct and current will come this way into the minus terminal during negative half of the cycle d4 will conduct and the current will flow through the rl and d1 will conduct and go into this top part of the voltage source okay so for a diode when the diode is conducting during positive half or negative half during positive half d2 and d3 will conduct during negative half d4 and d1 will conduct okay when the diode is conducting we have set the cut-in voltage or the junction potential as 0.6 volt so there will be a drop of 0.6 volt 0.6 volt together it is 1.2 volt that is the reason the output voltage will be less than the input voltage by 1.2 volt how to change this just to change the junction voltage instead of 0 0.6 to 0 0.1 volt or 0 volt okay we will do that now so click the diode d1 go to the advanced parameter initially we have set it as 0 0.6 now set it to 0 volt okay it's saying it should be greater than 0 also 0.01 i am setting as 0 0.01 next likewise very small value instead of 0 0.6 i am setting it as 0 0.01 likewise you do for all the four diodes in the, all the junction potential of this diode to 0 0.01 now we will run the simulation we will see the output will be very close to the input okay go to the grapher go to the grapher but still there is a drop i do not know why it is why the drop is there maybe due to you will check it out this drop is maybe due to the current going through the diode into the resistance value that's why we make it a small change going to the grapher we can can plot even the uh, input only means output only means we can see the reference is given as here pr1 pr1 probe one is the input waveform okay pr2 is the right See, the thing is, input, even the input voltage is not there. The PR1 is the green line, green line is the input line, this blue is the rectified waveform. Individually also we can see the waveform. If you need only the output, we can go for PR2 only. If you need only the input, we can select the PR1 only. Okay. As usual, we can export the waveform. If you can go for the export symbol, you can see the arrow pointing outwards, that's export. We can export the schematic image. We can export the schematic. Okay, before exporting, uh, ensure that you are renaming the circuit. Okay, here if you can the top, you can click it and rename, rename it as full wave. Full wave rectified. Full wave rectified circuit. And you can save it as you can go there, go to the left corner. You can save. Once it is saved. Okay, now you can export. Okay, without saving also you can export. If you save, in future you can open the file again. Okay, schematic image is exported. Schematic image is nothing but the circuit, full way schematic, then grapher image. So this is the grapher image now. This is exported. The grapher image is having only the input now. And if you need only the output, I can export that also. Select the output only. Then go and export. Right. Okay. So now we have exported the circuit. So this is the circuit image. Just a moment. So this is the circuit image for the fully rectifier. 
and uh, I can show the rectify circuit image. Input to a form image. 